Jera is putting an interesting spin on recent history here. Why does everyone hate Scott Frost so much? They were a very good team in 21. And the AD probably forced some changes. He was one of the only coaches who spoke up in the COVID days. Well, he did fight for a football season. That, that is true. No. I, you know, time just runs out on you. You can't produce, you know, three, four wins a year doesn't cut it. And obviously, you know, there was very competitive in his last couple of years. And, you know, a lot of things just didn't go their way. Sometimes that's the way it goes. And, you know, sometimes there's some poor decisions made that, that help in – not getting those wins, but um, he knew what he was up against, and he didn't produce, and um, yeah, we've all moved on. Absolutely. Yeah, hopefully there aren't too many people out there that hate him. I don't think there are. I, I think that's a pretty harsh yes. statement there. Um, I think everybody wishes him well. I mean, you know, the rumors, Scott Frost going to Alabama is – the OC. So wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> well, that worked well at Oregon and UCF for him. So that might be a good place for him to, to get his feet back under him and uh, go to the often uh, described uh, Nick Saban, you know, rehabilitation yeah. for wayward coaches. Hey, you know what? It, it, it's a pretty good program. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's produced pretty good results if you if you uh, go there for rehab. Um, but you know, I think better the better way to put that is too that I think everybody and I know everybody wanted Scott Frost to succeed here, and unfortunately, it didn't happen. So I don't think there's any kind of animosity there. I mean, most people wish him best and what he's going to do next and uh i think that's the way everybody should take it that you know maybe maybe people out there brag that they hate a guy or something like that but do you really you take that for you think that's the way he really thinks or is just trying to brag and uh be heard that's my opinion on that regardless uh of whether or not his head coaching tenure turned out at Nebraska, and obviously it did not. He's still an all-time great Husker and contributed much to the program, obviously, as a player. He's an all-time great. He's got national championship rings. Yeah, that can't be forgotten. And, you know, he won't be a guy that, like, won't be back here, It'll take 20 years for him to get back and be honored on the field. I don't think that's ever going to happen. You'll probably see him here in a couple, two or three years being honored. Maybe five. <laughs> well, think that in uh, one season in 2024, we will be at the 30 year anniversary of the 1994 national championship team. Yeah. Well, I would, I would expect him to be here uh, along with his teammates. So there are going to be championships to be honored here in the next Three out of four years with the 94, 95, and 97 championship teams yeah. hitting anniversaries. So hopefully Nebraska can field a good team, uh, and it's uh, just not going to be a halftime celebration in front of a three- or four-win team. But uh, I don't believe that's going to be the case. I do expect Matt Rule to be successful. Yeah, I mean, he couldn't have got off to a better start, in my opinion, you know. So, <laughs> I think, and the coaching and staff that he has assembled just impresses you every time you meet a new one of those coaches. Just very, very impressive guys. And uh, high energy and very competitive. So, they can't all, you know, all of them, Oh, everything to, to coach rule. That's the thing that always sticks out too. Um, so yeah, it, it, 
I think Nebraska's in a pretty good situation here with Matt Rule. And, you know, can't wait to see, uh, you know, can't wait to hear what he has to say tomorrow.